kids. <laughs> no more purple worms, huh? Did we get rid of the purple worms? Are you happy? No more purple worms, Eva. Oh, yeah. No more purple worms. We got rid of them. You're safe now. You're safe. You can you can be free. Fly, Eva. Fly on the table. Don't you cry. You get to play with miniatures if you like. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's back, folks. No more purple worms. Lots and lots of Eva. All the Eva. She'll be inseparable now. We won't be able to get rid of her even if we want to. So, I thought of another topic for a fun video. Yeah, very exciting, very nice. Let's get a little mood music going. So, I want to talk to you guys about different types of terrain and miniatures for your D&D &D experience. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize this about D, D experiences, but they can be varied. There's a lot of different ways to do D and D, uh, and you know, some folks really enjoy the uh, theater of mind style of play, where you don't have any miniatures at all. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all wrong with theater of mind. It is an excellent way to play the game. Um, however, others enjoy actual miniatures. They want doors to open. Is it actually open? Ah, this one does, but I'm not going to force it. And most of all, they want their characters to look cool. You know, they want their characters to look like characters. Uh, if nothing else, I would recommend having some miniatures just as characters, okay? But what kind of miniatures do you need? Well, that's what this video is about. So the uh, one thing you can look at for mi miniatures, guys, is the price, okay? So one cheap way to get miniatures is to grab a board game. But the quality can vary on those, you know. Another is to buy pre-painted miniatures. That saves you a lot of effort and time. But these tend to cost more. Um, sometimes you'll find defunct games like this one. And you can cut them off the HeroClix base and put them on new bases so that they fit into your game. Um, other, and this is another example, this is from a board game as well, a uh, nice villager, very lovely. Um, you uh, can get old board games that are out of print, um, so this is an old uh, Warhammer mini, yeah? Or, you know, you can buy Reaper Bones. Reaper Bones.
Reaper Bones are fine miniatures. They work great. Um, another line that's cheap and effective is WizKids. WizKids is a fine model line for crying out loud. So this is WizKids. Um, this is WizKids. And these are a little smaller in scale than the uh, the Reaper Bones. Um, the old Ralph Partha minis. Although being small in scale, you can find them sometimes really cheap. This one was a gnome necromancer. And this is his familiar. So, you know, pretty cool. Um, there are several lines you can get. Oh, I wanted to show this. You can make your own. This is made out of clay. Um, this is a half orc, if I remember right, barbarian. So, you can make your own. You don't have to. Uh, this one's Wiz Kids. It's a turtle. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of different types of minis you can get, but you don't have to put in the big money. Uh, you know, some of these cost two, three bucks each. Maybe you don't want to spend that. Maybe you're not doing PCs. You want to do NPCs on the cheap. Well, one way to accomplish that are Pathfinder Pawns. Um, this is a very inexpensive way to get hundreds of minis. Um, they go on bases. Um, they're little plastic bases. You slide them on, you set them down. The advantage is the price. The disadvantage is you only have one angle. Now, there are other product options that fix that discrepancy. And that's these uh, clear minis front and back um, you know these run about 50 cents each whereas these run about a quarter give or take and those prices will be going up because of inflation guys so just so you know. but uh, yeah this is from Arknight they make a line of these there's other companies that make them as well and they are clear plastic minis um, you know, I do actually use these. these I, all of these get uh, use. And one thing I thought of for use would be pre-made uh, encounters. So like a pre-made encounter table would be great to have, um, you know, little minis like this uh, that you're not going to use a lot of. Maybe they're specific. You put them in a little, I have these little boxes I bought, little plastic uh, like pencil boxes. You put the map and everything in the box, right? And boom, it's ready to go when you roll it on the table. Oh, you've encountered a nymph, or you've encountered an elven noble who's uh, been split from his uh, entourage by an orc attack, or whatever. You know, you, it could be whatever you want. It's uh, so if you have minis you don't use a lot, you can uh, turn them into an encounter. That's that's one thing I've been working on. Um, there's another option that I want to talk about real quick that I've never done, but you, if you have a, a specific mini you need, uh, and it say it's a, usually this works best with the monsters, uh, you have a monster, you want to bring it to party. Well, you could take a picture off the internet, print it on your printer, right? Cut it out and actually make one of these. All you need is a washer or a penny to glue it to. Okay, and you just take that piece of paper and you glue it front and back or um, if you, some people will print them where they're, it's two copies of the picture and they just fold it over another piece of cardboard. It can be old, an old box you cut up and then you take that and you glue it to a washer or a penny uh, and you can put it in styrofoam and then glue that styrofoam to the washer or penny. Okay. And uh, 
Yeah, the, they won't fall over because of the washer or penny. You've got a miniature. So, you know, you don't have a giant Hydra mini. Well, you can print up a giant Hydra like this and put it on a washer. We'd probably use a half dollar for that one. <laughs> but it works great. Um, now, if you're using 3D terrain, you can still use 2D minis in 3D terrain. It works fine. So, I just wanted to show you guys some of the options you have. Um, just keep in mind, and I'll, I'll briefly go back over what we've covered. Um, by the way, it amazes me how rare Fawn and Seder minis are. I like, like, someone get the clue here and get in on this. Get that money. Take my money. Um, real quick, if you... bandits right if you are going to get pre-painted minis you're going to pay more okay however if you have time you can buy them unpainted like this one and paint them yourselves right and now you got mama and papa lion and save yourself some money however if you don't have time, that's not going to work, right? So the other, the big advantage of these print-ups is you get the best of both worlds. You're not going to print it in black and white, though you can, right? Or you can just buy these Pathfinder pawns, right? I mean, you got a whole ship of pirates right here, you know, because they, they come with multiples. And... I mean, it even tells you what set they came from, and it's got a whole host of different critters. And you could use, it, say you don't play Pathfinder, you just play D&D. You, uh, you can use whatever stats you want for these monsters, you know. I wouldn't, so for me, a ghoul has too low of intelligence to really be doing all this, but that could be a white, easily. Uh, people underestimate whites. Whites can actually be quite dangerous. Um, but anyway, I, we're getting off topic. Um, you know, some miniatures are good to have. My animals and such, for animal familiars. Always, it's always cool if you have a familiar to have a little, little miniature to represent them. Uh, put a smile on everyone's face. You know, it makes them uh, more part of the party. A lot of times when you're playing, people forget about the familiars until, uh-oh, the DM's being a dick and he kills it. Well, if you got the miniature for it, it really lets you see why their they're, they're minion died. <laughs> I mean, dee -dee. Um, So, yeah, you know, whatever familiar you want, you might want to have a miniature for it. This could be uh, very beneficial. Now... Some of this stuff's really expensive, guys, so you gotta figure out what works for you, your budget. There is no wrong answer. Uh, but, don't be like me and get overzealous. Oh, I did wanna show you guys one more thing. Um, there are cheap minis. So, these minis here, now, I'm gonna tell you, price point wise, you're not gonna believe this, this costs about the same as this. Right? And you can see why I picked this to talk about. So, they're basically the same miniature. Yeah? I mean, without, you know, I, I think this is supposed to be like a broke ass Dritz Stewart, and but you get the point. They cost about the same. So what's the downside of this one versus this one? Well, one's painted. But one's only 2D. Right? So if you painted this one, it's going to be superior to this one every time. But this takes no work. It comes out of the package. You put it on the stand. You put it on the table. So definitely a market for both. I would say. Although I still think the kobold riding the drake is awesome. <laughs> here we're going to Pied Piper our ways on out of here. 
Have an amazing day, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you find all the miniatures of your dreams while you're away. Like, share, and subscribe.